In October 1955, 38 members of National Farmers Union paid their own way to participate in Farmers Union's first low-cost foreign tour. These people from seven states, stretching from Indiana to Washington, spent 32 days traveling and sightseeing and learning. Manhattan Island, the New Jersey coast, the Hudson River. And then a glimpse at Manhattan's famous skyline and the Empire State Building, 102 stories high. Embarkation day is a busy day for the traveler, baggage, tickets, inspection, for the ship readying for 10 days across the North, the South Atlantic. As the tugs pushed us out into the Hudson River and headed us out toward the open sea, the ensign of the Cristoforo Colombo goes to the mast. And we catch a glimpse of Midtown Manhattan on our way down the river. tip of Manhattan, Wall Street, and the Battery. And we make the turn out toward the sea. And a last look at the Goddess of Liberty. After a day at sea, we don life jackets and go on deck for the customary life drill. The weather is warm, the sky is blue, and we're moving out toward the Gulf Stream and sunny days, sunning on the deck, swimming, and wonderful food. All of the days aren't clear. We have one or two days of overcast weather and chilliness as we move closer to the Azores and the coast of Africa. Then after nine days of nothing but water, we see for the first time 
the coastline of Africa and then the famous Rock of Gibraltar. After Gibraltar, back again into the Mediterranean and toward Naples, seeing the Italian coastline on our left. The Mediterranean is calm, the sky is blue and the weather is warm. As we near Naples, we see the outpoint of the land and they're met by four jet fighters heralding our arrival. In the first glimpse of the famous city of Naples. The tugs hook on and we are gently nudged into the port. After 10 days, solid ground looks mighty good. Naples is a city of over a million population. It has beautiful homes, beautiful castles, but along the docks and in the lower parts of the city are tremendous slums. An enthusiastic crowd is waiting to greet friends and relatives they haven't seen for many, many years. And the famous city of Pompeii lying just outside of Naples, buried just before the time of Christ under 40 feet of molten lava. Excavations are going on all the time, and new discoveries are being made day by day. The arena, which predates the Roman arena, in the history of Italy and Rome. To the back of us, Mount Vesuvius, enshrouded by clouds. And to the front of us, the Bay of Naples and the coastline. This is the bay. The Isle of Capri, famous in song and story, the home of many famous people, a beautiful garden spot. And just to the north of Naples, a, a stone's throw almost from the city, are the three-acre plots of primitive agricultural methods, of plowing with oxen, with both the man and his wife hard at work. one of our party decides to take a hand at the plow. And instead of three acres, he farms over a thousand acres of wheat in Montana. These families try to eke a living off of the three acre plots. Just to the north of that, are the famous Pontine Marshes, the land reclaimed from the marshes by Mussolini and divided into 40 acre plots and then rent it back 
to farmers the farmers get their home they harvest their crops and a portion of the proceeds goes to the government under contract as we head towards rome we go by way of the famous napoleonic route this is a napoleonic bridge destroyed in world war two and replaced by this bridge after world war two mount casino the famous battleground during world war two was in the distance the appian way Shortly before we reached Rome, we visited a very modern dairy farm, which had been totally rebuilt following its destruction during World War II. And had a chance to see a cooperative And then by late afternoon, the skyline of Rome and St. Peter's. And we have viewed the ruins and the monuments from atop the Food and Agricultural Organization beautiful building in the center of the city. This is the terrace of the Food and Agriculture building. And then northward to Florence lying in the heart of the Apennine Mountains, a very beautiful and a very historic city. And then another look at fairly primitive agricultural operations, the drying corn on the racks, the wives making mats, trying to eke out a living from the land. Then as we move on toward Milan, into the fertile valleys of the north, we see much larger productions, the production of grain, the manufacturing of cheese, the manufacturing of wine. And then over to France, and a visit to a cheese factory, famous all over the world. And when we leave France, we move on to Switzerland, and just outside Geneva, the experience of seeing one of the finest dairy operations in the world. A world champion bull, a Swiss brown herd with championship milk production. Each cow has its own bell and its own sound and can always be de detected by the sound of that bell no matter how far away. It's a general farming operation too with hogs, chickens, and the production of some feed grains. And the famous Swiss dogs. This is the champion Swiss bull and the champion dairy producer.
we leave switzerland and cross the euro mountains into the fertile valleys of france for the first time see the clustered villages lying at the foot of the mountain and a look at a sugar beet cooperative most of france's sugar beet production goes into the production of alcohol with a minor portion going into the production of sugar and then a visit at troy to a wheat cooperative great terminal elevator similar to the grain terminal association and its terminal elevators a chat in the field with the workers harvesting sugar beet by the primitive fork and pull method and the tree lined avenue leading on to paris and from paris we move on to england to a beautiful countryside around london in the county of kent and after our twenty one days and many sites and a visit to many farms both large and small both primitive and modern we begin our flight back to the united states from london to prestwick and over across the north atlantic and back home Thank you.